Hey friends, I just wanted to talk about the long and short stitch really quick. Um, so, uh, I usually like to do it with two strands of floss because I don't have the patience to do it with one strand of floss. So here's, here's some that I did. Um, the only difference between these four shapes is that I just kind of changed either the direction of the stitches or... Uh, the shape of the transition. So for these top two, the transition happens straight across. There's four different colors here. And like I said, these are done with um, two strands of floss. I'm kind of moving it so you can see how it's not perfect. If I did it with one strand of floss, it would be a lot smoother. Um, I'll show you this for a second. So here's just a bunch of different satin stitches done different ways. So this one here, the smoothest one, that's a single strand. Here is two strands, so you can see it makes a difference, but I still use two strands. So if you want the smoothest possible look, you're going to need to do one. You just have to. I'm sorry. And if you look here, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six strands. This is a full strand of floss. Here I did it um, with an outline. Here I did it padded. Here I did padded with a single strand. Here is, what did I do? I don't know, we'll ignore those ones because I can't remember what I did. Should have written that down, huh? Um, so that's that. So I, I'm just showing you that so you know that a single strand is really the way to go, even though that's not what I did. I'm just giving you the information and you can make a decision. Okay, so these two have the transition straight across, like I was saying. These two have a curved transition. So you can see that um, I worked the color a little lower on the edges before transitioning to the next color. And then these two, I worked the st stitches straight down. Versus these two, I worked the stitches so that they converge at the point here. Um, which looks cool, but for me, it end, I end up building up too much. I need to practice this more. Um, with this, you, you have to tuck some of your stitches under other stitches, um, and I end up building too much mass with that. So um, I'd probably have a better time, like I said, if I did a single strand. So for me, these two look the best. If you want to do something like this just to practice your long and short, I say, I say go for it, you know. Um, see where you need to practice more, see what looks the best for you. I should probably do some with a strangle strand over there, so to be continued. Anywho, um, I want to talk about the succulents. So for this particular succulent, I used six strands, or I'm so sorry, I used six different colors using either two strands of floss or one strand of floss. There's, this is kind of like fake long and short stitch. Like it starts as long and short and then I add stitches on top to blend, um, which is not traditional. And so if you're working this pattern and um, you're cringing at this fake stitch I'm using, don't use it, okay? Just do traditional long and short. You can still use the colors in this order and, um, you know, work it with a single strand and just go color by color by color with a single strand, okay? I don't want the embroidery police to come after us, so do what you need to do. Um, but I'm going to show you what I actually did here. It does add extra dimension, like it's not perfectly flat because of the way I do it. Um, so just know that going in, you know, like if you're okay with how that looks, then do it this way. If you're not and do it the traditional way, you know, use a single strand by the book. Okay, so I'll show you what I did and hopefully explain how it's the same or different from traditional long and short. Okay, so here's a little succulent leaf. So if you want, you know, you can mark off where your color changes are gonna be. So I'm using these three colors here is my main colors, and then my blending colors are over here. So I don't even need to worry about my blending colors yet. But I'm going to look at um, my main colors. So I have three colors, so I need to put in two lines to divide this into three sections. 
you don't have to mark yours off if you don't want to. So I'm going to have the base color here, and then the in-between color will be here, and then my final color up here. So let's do it. Okay, let me, so I don't tangle. I'm going to move these to the side, and I'll put these up here. I could just see a big mess happening. Okay, and for another important thing here, so a good way to create like more depth is to do the outline. So like here, there's definitely, I outlined this shape in um, split stitch before doing my long and short over. So I'll show you what that looks like. We'll pretend like, um, we'll do it on this end. The end I'm going to start here. And you can do, if you want, you can just, before you even start, just do the whole thing outlined with whatever color. I mean, it's going to get, it's going to get covered, right, by your stitches. So it doesn't matter what color you use. I tend to just um, do it one color at, the, at a time. That's probably not the most efficient way, though. I'm trying to do a split stitch here. My goodness. Oh, I had it. Okay. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. Okay, here we go. Outline. I'm just going to do the outline on this one section to save us some time, but the more outline you do, um, no, I think the better it's going to look. The more dimension you're going to have, the less of, uh, you know, otherwise your, your succulent leaves or whatever you're stitching can fade into each other. Um, so this kind of helps give dimension between them. Okay, outline. Now we're going to start doing our long and short. So, um, you want to definitely go over your line because you're gonna have these, the, the tips of these stitches are gonna be overlapped. So I like to kinda get in some baselines. I'm gonna go straight with these stitches instead of directional. So, here's some of my long stitches. I'm trying to have them all go in the same direction. They're not. You can see I have some a little bit of twisting in my stitch here in this one. See that? Oh, and this one. So, you know, if you have a single strand of floss, you're not going to have twisting because that's the twisting we're seeing is between the two strands. So one thing you can do is, if you do want to still use the, the two strands, is you can pull them apart and then lay them back together. That will help. But once again, if you want it perfect, you're going to have to take the time and do the single strand. Oops. So now I'm just I'm just filling in here. So I'm having some lower, shorter, some longer, and you're filling it like you would fill a satin stitch. I'm afraid I'm going to lose this here. Okay. Okay, I'm going to keep filling and I will be right back. Okay, I ran out of thread, and so I <laughs> will pretend like this is done, but we'll we'll focus over here. Sorry about that, guys. I should have made a smaller succulent leaf there. Um, so I went ahead, and I'm on my next color now, which is going to be this middle section here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up through the previous stitches. So basically, it's like split stitch, although I have a really hard time actually splitting the stitches. Um... I think if you do split the stitches, it's gonna look more smooth. But for me, sometimes I'm coming up in between. See there, I'm between. Here I'm, there I'm splitting. So it's a little tricky, um, but just practice. And I'm just doing the same thing with my next color. Um, so like I said, I'm doing like the weird fake version. So if you weren't doing the weird fake version, you would be using a single strand and 
these two colors would not be touching. You'd be doing um, the in-between colors. That'll hopefully make sense in a second here. So I'm just splitting these stitches and working up. Um, and in this case, I am not outlining the top of the leaf just to save some time for our video here, but please feel free to outline your entire shape before you do this. Okay, I finished up that color and now I'm moving on to the last color, which is this gorgeous purple. Um, what else can I tell you? So sometimes I like, I've cheated and gone from the top down instead of up through previous stitches. And that's also a no-no, even though I am breaking rules here. Um, when you do that, it can lead to more, um, distortion of the thread, like puckering. I'm trying to think of the right word for that. Dents. You make little dents in your thread in the previous stitches if you go down. Oh, I'm sorry, there is a cat that is rubbing all over everything. She's bonking her head in my leg into my embroidery stand. She's just like horribly attention deprived. She's all up in our business here. I wonder if you can hear her purring. She sounds like she's growling. <laughs> no, kitty. <laughs> she's crazy. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to finish up this sheet for you guys. Please let me know if you have questions. Uh, and, you know, the more raggedy this edge is, the easier it is to blend. So you definitely want some really long, some really short. That's annoying, right? I shouldn't have left that there. Hello, Go Go Boots. We see you. Okay, did I leave any gaps? So you want these stitches nice and tight like you were like as if you were doing a satin stitch. So I'm checking for gaps. Okay, hi boots. Go away. Busy here. Okay. Mm, I kinda left a hole there. Not like I don't have a giant hole off to the side. Okay, we'll stop there. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with my blending colors. I'll start from the top just for fun. <clears throat> so I have a single strand of this lighter color here, this lighter purple. And I'm and here's where I'm breaking the rules because you know, I'm gonna go up and split some stitches, but I'm also gonna have to go down and split stitches too. So that's where the rule breaking happens. And I'm just using this color to soften the edge between the two colors. That's it. So like I said, if this makes you cuckoo, don't do it. And uh, do the traditional um, long and short stitch. So you would be doing, instead of what I just did with three colors, you'd be doing that with six colors. If you want to use all six colors, you don't have to. You can use whatever the heck colors you want. But, um, you know, obviously the more colors you use, the more dimension your work's going to have the smoother it's going to look. Um, yeah. So again, with these, I'm, I'm kind of replicating a, a long and short. I'm having some of them, some of them go higher, some of them will go lower. On the edges, like on the round edges, I kind of like to go down a little bit. And 
And if it looks funny, if it looks raggedy, you might just need to keep going and add more stitches. Also, with this, you can come back with the other colors too, those main three colors. If when you're done, it's like, oh, you know, that doesn't look as smooth as I would like it to look, you can come back with a single strand of one of those original colors and do some more blending. It's up to you. So this to me feels more like thread painting, this back and forth that I get from, from doing it this way. So, but like I said, not traditional. Might not be right for you, but this is what I did. So that's what I'm showing you. This is also what I did in the um, the hedgehog pattern. The same thing where I would use two colors and then blend with an in-between color. You can see I'm kind of jumping all over the place. Okay. We'll stop there. I'm almost at our recording time, so I'm going to have to stop and just tell you what's next. So then I used this awesome color here. Um... It's obviously not in between those two colors. It's kind of a little bit crazier. But succulents kind of have that where they have bits of crazy. Um, and then finally, I have the darkest green, which is going to go all the way at the bottom down here. And that's really going to be useful. You know, if you look at, at this, you can see... Uh, when I have two darks together, like right here is a really good example... I chose one side to add the dark to, the darkest dark, the darkest green. So here, this one just has that medium green, while this one has the darkest dark to, once again, help differentiate between the two. Sorry, this stupid cat is now on my seat, rubbing against my arms. This is ridiculous. You're going to have to go to kitty daycare. Okay, I hope that made sense, guys. Um, and have fun with it. Yay! Hi friends, I hope you're enjoying this pattern. I just wanted to show you a couple stitches that um, might be easier to understand by video. Um, so for the lavender, I'm just doing little stitches. I have no idea what the heck these would be called, but I just do like uh, a just straight stitch, simple stitch. Um, if you look at a picture of lavender, that might help. Um, there's no right or wrong number of stitches to do. You'll want to use a better hoop than the hoop I'm using. Oh my goodness gracious. There we go. Pull that out. So, speaking of hoops, well, let me finish this and then we can talk about hoops. So I'm just doing a little back and forth here, making little tiny lavender petals. Would they even be called petals? I don't even know. Okay, so I'm just, I'm doing the dark color first because that's like the low lights. And then once I'm done, I come back with the lighter color purple and just continue over the top doing little kind of highlights um, just to add a little more dimension. That's why there's two colors there. Um, just parking that over there because I'm not going to show you anymore. Hopefully that made sense. It's just almost like little V's. Let's call them V's, kind of like you would do a fern, or yeah, like a fern stitch, but it you don't have the base as a back stitch. It's more like I I don't know. Make make your stitches look like that, okay, guys? <laughs> um, and you know you have some creative license if you want to do the little bits at the bottom. Look at a picture of lavender, and you'll understand what the heck's going on there. So, so that's that. As far as the hoop goes, before I I get too angry at this one. So um, these hoops are cheap, um, but pretty readily available. And they're actually what I use, even though sometimes I hate them. You can see I don't have this one as tight as I should, which is probably part of my problem. Um, but if you've tried to stitch in this, you understand why I'm not stitching in this. Um, these are great for framing, which is what we're going to do. But even here, you can see these like ridiculous gaps. Like, uh-uh, that's not going to work, especially with a project like this where you're doing all that long and short, all that satin stitch. You're going to end up with a lot of wrinkles, a lot of um, warping of your fabric. It's just, it's not good. So, um, 
if you have a hoop, a round hoop at home, or if you grabbed a spare hoop from me, um, if it's from me, it's one of these crappy ones. <laughs> that sounds good, huh? Um, cause it's just, it's expensive to include an expensive hoop, obviously. Um, but what you can do is you can bind these hoops or what I do is I'll even just like fold over my fabric inside here. So I have extra thickness or just grab some scrap fabric and make a mask. All things you can do. Um, to make these cheap hoops actually more usable and more user-friendly, less frustrating. So here I think I'm doing better now that I actually tightened my hoop. But um, that's what I know about that. So let me, let me do this rose real quick. So the center of the rose is going to be a woven wheel. So you can see I already put my little star in. And it's kind of a goofy star, right? It's kind of elongated because this isn't a perfect head-on rose. It's kind of like flopping down. So that's what we're trying to do here. Something to keep in mind is that the bottom of the rose overlaps these leaves, but we need the top of the rose to be under this flower and this succulent. So that's why my star is so small. We're going to have to fake it. And I don't really know... Um, what that's called besides faking it but I'll show you what I did so there we go I'm just gonna do a little woven wheel action here just like you would regularly do even though it's kind of like a goofy a goofy lopsided star to start this is where you get dizzy <laughs> So just keep going around. I'm going to pause to save you some uh, motion sickness. But I'll meet you back up when uh, when I finish my star. Okay, I didn't finish because I have to show you. I'm going to switch threads. So I'm just going to go down with this thread. And I'm going to actually use this for my lavender over here. So I'm just going to park this over here. And grab my lighter lavender. And I'm going to anchor. Don't look at my messy butt. It's real bad. Okay. And then I'm going to just pop up wherever the heck I feel like it. I'm going to pop up near where I went down. In theory. Here we go. And keep going. And if you get like off your rhythm as far as up, down, up, down, when you switch threads... No one's going to notice, so don't even worry about that. So I'm going to keep going here. If you want for doing these, you can use like a tapis tapestry. Yeah, tapestry needle. Tapis tapestry. Oh my gosh. Um, if you're worried about stabbing your other stitches, a needle with a blunt tip will serve you well here. I'm using just the needle I had. I'm just being very careful. I'm pushing up from below a little bit to keep this rose like lifted so that when I come through uh, my needle has less of a chance of stabbing my other stitches. I'm doing a better job keeping this in the video frame. It always it always starts migrating over towards me. Okay, so I'm going to start kind of faking it now. So what I'm going to do is just kind of keep creating petals, but as stitches. They're just like simple straight stitches. So I want to concentrate them on the sides where I need to kind of expand out. You can see my weird star shape didn't really create much of a difference. It looks like a pretty round shape to me. But so I'm going to come and just make stitches. You don't want them too long or they'll cover your previous stitches. I'm going to go to the bottom. And then come back up here. What is this called, do you think? Not sure. 
I'm using, you saw I just used my thumb to kind of help lay the stitch where I wanted it. So you need to be careful over here near the succulent. You don't want it too puffy by the succulent like I was saying. It looks like I probably did, but we're going to just go with it. Because um, this is technically supposed to be under the succulent. So make sure you don't cover it up or have your stitches too poofy over there. Um, so there's obviously no rhyme or reason to where I'm doing these. I'm just kind of filling in where these stitches would go if if I was still able to do the woven wheel in this shape. So I don't know you guys. Hopefully just watching it makes makes it make sense. Who knows what the heck I'm gonna call this in the directions. I don't know. <laughs> So, because I like convenience, what I'm going to do is just go till I run out of this color, and that's when I'll switch to the white. And I'm just going to keep going, going, going. And if you want to make the bottom poofier by just adding more and more stitches, you can to give it more of a 3D look. So once I run out of thread here, I'm just going to anchor this and then start with the white. So I'm going to do that and I'll meet you back. Alright, I finished the purple and now I'm on the, the white. And it's kind of like, it's almost like a, um, a fake, what's the word, stem stitch. So I did a, did a stitch and I'm coming up like next to it from behind a little bit going around like these like little overlappy stitches all the way around like as a fill stitch to get that texture to kind of replicate what a woven wheel would look like if you could do it in this shape. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Okay. More of the same. So you can see I still have to fill in over here and over here, but I think you can get the idea of, see, come on, autofocus, there we go. Get an idea of what this is going to look like. Okay. Um, so let me just park this, get it out of the way. I'm just going to show you how to, how to frame your piece when you're done. Maybe. <laughs> okay. So, and you can see that having the hoop on there did not damage my stitches, FYI. Okay. So, here's my hoop. So, in this case, I would say go ahead and iron. Um, do not burn your work. <laughs> Use, I mean, obviously you're going to need a hot iron, but don't overdo it. Um... This should be okay to spray, like if you need to use some steam or a little spray of water to get out any any of your creases. Um, if you don't have to, then don't. Hey friends! Okay, so I have finished my design and then I, I came back and I, um, I did do some ironing. If you know anything about me, I hate ironing. If I can get away not doing it, I'm not going to do it, but... Um, just for you, I went ahead and ironed. Um, oh, and I stained my hoop. So, I think both colors look good, the stained and the unstained. So, whatever. Do what works for you. Um, so, let me show you how I'm going to do this. Also, it doesn't matter if you have your hoop like this, or like this, or on this side, or on this side. Put your little doohickey wherever you want it, in whatever direction you want. So, I'm going for like this. Um, also a couple more things, so hopefully I'm, I didn't run into any problems, we'll see. You can see some of my satin stitches kind of puffy here, 
because the tension got messed up when I was stitching. Um, because I'm not perfect. Uh, so if you're having any problem with your tension on your satin stitch, there's a couple of things you can do here. So if you look, um, and this, this also has to do with like the direction that you choose to do your stitches in. Um, so usually when I do leaves, I like to do it like how I did this one that's messed up, which I might have to pull out and redo. Um, but I like to go lengthwise because I just, I don't know, I, I just like to. <laughs> but the problem is that these leaves are really big and satin stitch gets a little unstable uh, if your stitches are really long like this. So what is this? This is like at least an inch. So um, other options would be instead of going vertical along your leaf, you can go horizontal. Not my favorite because when you get to the tip, you're doing these like really, really, really tiny stitches. And I'm not into that. Um, so you can see what I did. Like here, I did like a diagonal. So instead of doing like this way where I'd have a super long stitch, I did my stitches in this direction. Okay. Same thing over here. They're not along the vein like what I like to do because they would be too long. So I went diagonal instead. And it's up to you how you want to do that. Another option would be you can draw your own like vein and do stitches this direction on one side and stitches this direction on the other side. So lots of options for you to make sure that you don't have any weird tension issues like I do. I'm hoping that we can just like pull this fabric super crazy tight and um, we'll never speak it, of it again, but we'll, we'll see. I may actually have to rip those stitches out and redo it, which is not recommended like in this hoop, like I said, but um, yeah, playing it fast and loose here. We'll see what happens. And I've got cats already. Hi, Boots. What's up? Okay. Um, so what I need for this step, obviously, is my finished embroidery, my hoop. I've got these little um, clamps. I got these on the internet. They're for quilting. Um, I was using, like, the clamps with the rubber, which I really like. Um, but they were like for the kitchen and so all of our um, chips were going stale because I had all the clamps in here. So I figured I should buy my own craft clamps. So here we are. I haven't used them yet, so hopefully these actually work. And then I have some craft glue. I'm a big fan of just the Eileen's. Um, you can use your uh, hot glue gun, that's the word. You can use your hot glue gun, whatever you're into for glue. Um, that's what I know. Okay, so my I'm pretty centered in here. Like, make any adjustments you want to make. I think I might come up a little bit. If it lets me. Whoa! Whoa! Hey, Boots, get out of here. She's bonking against the stand. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Okay. Where was I? <laughs> okay, I, I moved it up a little bit. You want it, you know. Make sure that you're pretty happy with it before you start tightening and whatnot. So I'm just going to tighten this screw. Da, 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 da. Okay, I'm going to pause for a minute and do a little pulling of my fabric. I'm not pulling too tight because I still have more tightening of that screw and I don't want to over pull and get, um, get out of center. Okay, cool, okay, now I'm going to tighten some more. This is just like how I tighten also for when I'm going to stitch. So like when I stitched in my round hoop, this is the same method. Except I don't really have to worry about centering, you know, because it's not going to be permanent. Ugh. Okay, my fingers are going numb, so that's, we're probably good. <laughs> don't hurt yourself. Okay, and so what I'm going to do now, this is actually not too bad. I have a little something weird here, some weird stuff here and here and here, and this is kind of poofy. So I'm hoping that with the clamps and the glue, we can correct that stuff. 
Now, I think some of this warping is probably due to uh, tension issues when I was stitching. Um, like I said, the best way to not have tension issues while you're stitching is to have your fabric as tight as possible on your hoop while you're working. Um, and a big component of that is having a decent hoop that's going to hold that tension for you. So, um, if you're having problems, please bind your hoop or add an extra layer of fabric in there. Um, or buy a nice hoop. You can buy the plastic ones. You can buy the fancy wood ones. There's metal ones. Get what works for you. Okay, so what the heck did I do? I just trimmed my fabric. Um, I want it so that when I come back here and tuck, that I'm not going to have this fabric actually touching the front because sometimes you can actually see that. We don't want that. Okay, so here's the back, for better or worse. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look here and see. Okay, so here, I don't want to get any closer than that on this side. So what I'm going to do is just tuck here and put a clamp because I'm happy with how this side looks here. Now, let's see, let's go across. And I'm going to pull like my life depends on it. Pull, 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 pull. And then press. And then clamp. Boom. Okay. And I'm going to just keep going. Um, maybe we should go this way. So I'm pulling. Press. And hopefully this will work on this curve. Yeah. Sweet. All right. This could, I mean, this could totally be a disaster. I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> Don't you love doing something for the very first time on video? Luckily, it's not live. Oh, my goodness. Okay, and I'm just continuing. So, here, I probably need to trim that fabric. Let's see. Can we see it? No. I guess it's okay, then. We'll see. We'll see when we get to the end if we can. Like, see, this is just too long for me. I'm just going to trim. Uh, but, you know, if you're if you're not sure, don't over trim because there's no. See, look, look how short I just made that. Don't do that. Don't do what I just did. It'll be fine, but you don't want to over trim because then that's it. <laughs> there's no getting that back. All right, pull. Clamp. And then pull and clamp. Awesome. Uh, so use as many as you want. I wouldn't use less than this. You can use more though. I might need more over here to help. So once you've clamped all the way around, go ahead and look at the front and make sure that it looks right, it looks centered, you've got all your bumps out. Um, and then you're just going to go ahead and use your glue, whatever your glue of choice is. Um, and I like to put the glue directly on the, uh, the fabric there. I'm going to trim this a little bit. If you have any, you know, when, when you pull that excess fabric, sometimes you end up with a little too much there. Okay, I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to put it here. Um, so when you take it off, obviously you're losing a little bit of tension. So if you want to get like, if you want to get in there and touch the glue, please, please do. I will just so you can see what that looks like, but I'm just going to pull and then press down like, like I did before, but this time it's just kind of stickier. Okay. And clamp. Now, if you have a bunch of glue on your hands, like I do, Wipe it off before you continue, okay? I know it's kind of a messy, messy deal. Um, but that's how you do it. And add an extra clip. Um, so go all the way around. Just remove one at a time. Keep that tension. And you're done. So let me know if you have questions. I hope you enjoyed this project. And I'll see you next time.